What's up? It's your girl Mariah. You're now tuned into Survival Kit the Podcast. Today is Thursday, of course, March the 17th, 2022. Nephew just had a birthday yesterday. Shout out to Reek Freaky Reeky. <laughs> Happy birthday, young boy. All right, let's uh shout out to my little brother. His birthday passed March the 9th. I'm saying shout out to all the shout outs to all the Pisces out there. I don't I don't really do the astrology thing. I try to stay away from it. Um I blame my mama. She always like, ah, you can't use astrology to, and horoscope to describe how you are. You are who you are. Like, you know, you was who you was for your guy here. That's what type of time it was. So I feel the same way. Mm, blame it on that. But uh, I am a Sagittarius. We get a lot. We get we get a lot of bad rep. Like, there's some great Sagittarius out there, though. I think we got Nicki Minaj, uh, Jay-Z, Lyrica Anderson. There's a few of us out there. We, you know what I'm saying? It's a few of us out there, but no, shout out to all the Pisces. Um, so what we well, let's get into it today. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about friends. How many of us have them? Friends. Ones you can depend on. Friends. <laughs> Not many of us have friends. Like friends to me is like a solid person that like no matter the time or space that passes in between the communications, um, you guys remain in touch. Uh, you know, it feels like nothing passed in between. I can say my true friend is my big cousin, Asia. Granted, we, um, we're only a few months apart, but she's still, you know, I, I give that, I give that respect. You know what I'm saying? That's my big cousin. And, um, that's been my homie since the sandbox. I literally got a picture of a save from when we was little. I think it was my birthday party. And uh, we was at Chuck E. Cheese. Everybody born in the '90s had a Chuck E. Cheese party. I feel like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been it was like that. And then, you know, we grew up and you know things and jobs and bills and everything. But no matter what, if I call her today and I tell her, "Yo, I need you to come here," she's gonna figure out a way to get there. Or "Yo, cuz I need to talk to you," she's gonna she's gonna talk to me. To me, that's a friend. That's my cousin, but that's my friend. Like. I can't say that for a lot of people. Like, that's the dog. Like, no matter what venture I am starting, she is supportive. Uh, she very she was very encouraging when I wrote my books, came to my book launch. And I hadn't talked to her in maybe a few years um, when I did the book launch. And as soon as I seen her, we were right back like, like we never left. To me, that's a friend, right? Someone who doesn't judge you. And even if they are judging you, you can take it. Like, if my cousin was like, yo, you you messing up. That's not right. I'm like, you know what? Dang, she right. And I'm going to take it into account. I'm going to try to see how I can alter what I'm doing and see if, you know, if I can even take what she's offering. To me, that's the true definition of a friend. Why are we talking about friendship? Well, because in business, a lot of times... You learn who your real friends are when you get into business. I always say, rule of thumb, if you want to see who your real folks are, wait for a major life event. Have a baby, get married, start a business, graduate from college. You're going to figure out who's really for you and who might not not be for you, but who's not willing to stick it out with you you dig me like you're gonna you're gonna figure it out quote of the day y'all know i love i love quotes i love me a good quote i hope y'all i hope y'all like my quotes i think i i pick really good quotes <laughs> quote of the day my man's grant cardone people that want to be you will hate you for the things they wanted to quit on people that want to be you will hate you for the things they wanted to quit on let that marinate. Let you feel that. It's people out there that you think is your homie. And y'all had the same goals. It might not be exactly the same, but y'all had some things in common. Y'all kind of had a, uh, you know, a verbal vision board party one day. I can remember it with each person that is no longer my homie. The day we had that talk. Yo, this is what I want to do in life. This is where I want to be in X amount of years. And then when I actually started doing what I said I was going to do, because your word is bond, right? I did what I said I was going to do. Or I'm in the process of doing what I said I was going to do. Things got funny. Things got weird. 
started being a lot of negative talk and not even constructive talk. I'm good for constructive criticism. My team, if you if you talk to anybody I've ever uh, assisted with their businesses, uh, shameless plug, that's what I do. You know, I assist with businesses. You know what I'm saying? I work in operations during the day. I take what I learned and I apply it at night to my entrepreneurial endeavors. You know what I'm saying? I operate. I'm going to help you operate. So the people that I help, they can tell you I'm always asking for feedback. Hey, how did y'all think that meeting went? What do you think I could be doing better? Was my tone too brash? I know I can be, you know what I'm saying, a little bullheaded, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Survival the Boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit bullheaded, and I, I embrace it. I've learned to embrace it. I used to be very shy of that. I used to get away of that, away from that because of friends. Oh, you're too hard-headed. Um, you know, once you make up your mind about something, it's, you don't never change your mind. I'd rather stick to my guns and die on that hill then be easily influenced because you think it's a good idea. Now, granted, this is my youth talking. So in maybe 20 years, I hope that mindset changes. I hope I have evolved by then. So I'm going to listen back to this podcast in like 20 years and um, be like, nah, why you say that? You know what I'm saying? You, you need to be more whatever. But in this moment, in this time, while I'm still young and hip and I can get around and I can maneuver this market and this landscape, this business environment, I'm sticking to my guns. I got to be bullish in this market. All right? So, I, again, I remember those conversations that I had with certain people. A lot of negative talk came about. And that's not to say that they hate. And I know we all think we got haters. Granted, you do. You do. And if you're in business and nobody is hating on you, I'm sorry, but you're not being a disruptor. If you're not disrupting things, if you're not making people nervous that you're about to come and take over the marketplace, maybe you don't have haters. But if you really know that you really bought it, you really like that, you really taking over that industry, whatever field that you're in, people are going to hate on you because nobody wants you to take their spot, right? We are human. We are repetitive. We like repetition. We don't like to change. And people don't like change, especially my people. I love everybody. Black Pope, we gotta we we gotta get better with that. We don't like change. Like, listen, I'm the type. <laughs> I remember it was a Cat Williams skit. We gonna have the same drink for years, and that's me. I'm either cognac if they don't got no if they don't got no yak at the party. I will do a nice brandy. If they don't got no brandy, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the whiskey. But I'm I'm sticking to what I like. We the same way in business. And it's a good thing, but then it can be a bad thing. And that's when the haters come. So, again, I think it is okay to have a hater or two. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It can be bad if everybody hates you. Now, if it's you against the world, <laughs> if it's you against the world, then maybe you want to look around. What are you doing that's making everybody dislike you? But if it's a few in there, you know, you're just being a disruptor. Keep being a disruptor. Don't stop. All right? So I just want everybody to know, don't confuse a friend who's giving constructive criticism with a friend of me who is trying to talk you out your goals and your dreams, okay? Because those kind of people, I believe that they are leechers and hanger owners. And you don't want to confuse them with your friends because you're not humble enough or open enough to take you know constructive criticism you're you're not teachable you got to be teachable uh you know i know that I, I i harp on the fact that i like my bullish ways at times but at the same time there are people who if they listening they know that they could call me up or they could text me and let me know no nah, don't do it that way and i'm really taking into consideration what they're saying or if i come to them for advice and they give me solid advice i'm gonna take that advice and I'm going to run with that advice because you got to have those people that you look up to and that you can glean from, iron sharp and iron. So it might hurt when it go in, you know what I'm saying? But when it when that thing comes back out of you, you know, you take it all in, it might hurt. When you regurgitate or you act on what you've learned and what you've taken in, trust me, it's going to be a beautiful thing, all right? So why do people or friends become enemies when you're doing great. Like, it seemed like, dang, I'm starting a business. You know, I, I done moved up at work. I'm making more money now. Or I done had a baby. I done got married. I done moved into a nicer neighborhood. 
And now everybody calling me stuck up and bougie and saying I think I'm better, but I'm the same person. I'm here to tell you, no, you're not, okay? You're different now. You've changed. Life is different now. And everybody's not willing to accept that. Not everybody's comfortable yet. And sometimes I think as business owners, we don't do the greatest job or we don't do the best due diligence of communicating with those around us that, hey, things are about to change. All right, so why do people, why do people turn on you? Why have friends, you know, how many of us have them? <laughs> why do people turn on you? Well, one, I think it's fear. It's plain and simple. People are scared. Everybody doesn't have the fight gene, right? There's fight, there's flight, and there's freeze. A lot of people freeze and get stuck. Think about it. Think about the person that, that peaked in high school <laughs> or peaked in college. And then... Maybe 10 years, 15, 20 years go by, and they're still in that same place. They froze in time and because they're scared to move past it. Well, this is all I know, so I have to keep it. I got to stay right here because this is the best that I've ever been. Not realizing if they let it go, they'll become better. So some people freeze. Some people flee. Like, listen, woof, this is too much. You don't got to worry about me. You do not have to worry about me. I'm good. I'm out of here. I'm fleeing. Some people have the flight. It's too hard. Business is too risky. I can't do it. I'm out of here. And then you got the people like myself. You know what I'm saying? We we Mike Tyson in a fight. We not we we not getting out of here. Right? We, we're going to sit here. We're going to work through it. And no matter how risky, no matter the failures that come, we we sticking it out. We sticking and moving. We might be Muhammad Ali. We, our backs might get against the rope, but we gonna rest up, and we gonna come back. We gonna come back swinging. We gonna come back swinging hard. So you gotta find out where you are in life, and think about the people who are telling you, "Don't do that. This isn't a good idea. That you know this this might not be a good idea for you to do." Think about that, and think about where they are. Are they in the are they a fighter? Are they a fleer? Are they a freezer? Think about who they are, and that will explain it to you. I remember when I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on an adventure kick right now, and I'm learning everything that I wanted to learn when I was a kid. I moved around a lot. Um, you know, we come from humble beginnings, so I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to do unless it was, you know, free school sports. So recently, I, I knew how to skate, like four wheel skate. But I wasn't good at it. Like, I could get around the rink, but then, you know, I got to get out the way. I got to stand near the wall. I'm falling all I'm falling all over the place. I'm one of, I was one of those skaters. I said, you know, I'm tired of that. I'm about to learn how to really skate. And so I did. And it was rough. I fell a few times. But, you know, I'm, I'm not young no more. You know, I break something now, I'm going to be out. So <laughs> I had my wristbands on. Uh, I mean, my wrist brace. Uh, I didn't do the elbow brace. I was like, man, I'm cool. Even though I should have, because I broke my elbow before when I was younger. So maybe I should have did that. But I never landed on the elbow, so I'm good. I had my knee pads on. I had my ankle brace on. You know, I'm braced up. I didn't, I played sports. I had a lot of injuries, so I'm braced up. And people kept telling me, yo, you going to fall, man. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, dang, I just want to learn how to skate. <laughs> like, why are y'all so scared? We just skated. Everybody was scared for me. I wasn't even scared. I started to become scared because everybody said the same thing. Yo, man, you won't fall, man. You won't hurt yourself. Yo, you won't hurt yourself. Needless to say, I did end up hurting myself. I did. I was, because I was, <laughs> I remember it too. I was going and I was, I got nervous. I'm like, yo, I was trying different moves and stuff. I learned how to skate backwards and everything. So I'm going to the skating rink, practicing. You know, they tell you, if you can't skate backwards, get off the floor. I'm on the floor because I can skate backwards now. And one day I'm doing a little self-practice. Tore myself up. Uh, ankle was out of commission. I'm back now. But I just remember that people were so scared for me. I'm like, what are y'all scared for? It's just a fear thing. And it's not anything against them. They just can't see what you can see. So you got to make sure you don't let that creep into you right now again that was a not a silly example because my ankle was tore up but that was just a small example for you it might be much bigger it might be a big life-changing event and people are speaking fear into your life don't let it creep in shut the noise off because they will stop you it'll take you from your fighting phase to your freezing phase and you don't want to get caught up in that all right what's another reason why they why they turn on you 
They just don't get it. They don't understand. It goes into my last point. You know, they just don't see it. They don't understand what you've been through. You can't hang out anymore. You're not going out to eat as much as you were. Uh, me and my wife, we used to love going to this one restaurant downtown. It didn't matter what we was doing. It got to the point where, you know, you you finally go to them fancy restaurants, so you dressing up, you looking all nice. We got to the point where like, yo, I'm like, yo, throw your tights on. <laughs> I was like, throw them, throw them, on, throw them little shoes, and we going, we going to get something to eat. And then I'm like, you know what? We want to grow. We want to scale. All right, we can't keep doing the same thing we've been doing and expecting to grow. So we had to start cutting things out. And it, you know, got a little, got a little sticky with certain people. Like, oh, why y'all can't go out? Why y'all can't do this? Oh, I thought y'all would have been doing that. Like. You know, you don't want to explain to everybody. No, I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z because everybody doesn't deserve to know what you got going on. But a lot of people will not understand the sacrifices that you're making in order to grow. You got to cut back in order to grow, right? You know, that tight budget, um, you know, it's just, you got to stick to it. I remember one time I didn't want to go out um, after a certain event with some some close people I was close with at the time. I just didn't want to go out after that event. You know, I was working on my sacrificing. And they got pissed off, and it turned into a whole situation. I'm like, dang, all because I want to sacrifice and, you know, work on my habits and be a better person? It turned into all this? It was crazy. But they just don't get it. Now I'm sure they get it because they can see what's going on in my life. Um, But, yeah, at the time, they, they just didn't understand, and that's okay. Charge it to their heads, not their hearts. And maybe that's my problem. All right? Because some the third reason, I think, you know, people are scared. People just don't get it. And the third reason, sometimes people are just envious. And I think I do too much giving people the benefit of the doubt. You know? I do. I got a big heart. I can't help it. You know, that's something I don't want to change in this it's all about me culture. I want to still have a big giving heart. And sometimes that can get in the way. That's why I'm such a bullish person because I love very easily, right? Some people just don't understand that you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. But they're really just envious of you. They might not really just be scared or just don't get it. Sometimes they just straight up jealous. And you got to be careful of that. You know, some people don't like to see others succeed. It's that crab in a barrel mentality that a lot of people talk about. Like, you know, people attribute it to the hood all the time. But it's not just the hood. It's in every every area of life. There's a crab in a barrel mentality when people have low self-esteem. <laughs> another another uh, <laughs> Cat Williams skit is esteem of yourself. Like, how am I messing up your self-esteem? That's some personal growth that you have to do. But obviously, they're not there yet, so they can't see that. So you excelling and you accepting your flaws and you getting out there messing up is is beyond their imagination, right? I'm out. Y'all want to know how I'm recording this podcast? Got me a nice, cheap, but quality microphone off Amazon. Um, I do, like I always say, I do put in some quality when it comes to my uh, appliances. <laughs> so I do have a MacBook, but you don't need a MacBook. You just need any good laptop that can record. Right, and I have a a camera, but sometimes I record on my iPhone. They both the both the pictures are pretty clear. One day, God willing, I got a studio and I don't have to worry about setup. I can pay another team to do it. But for now, I got my light set up and my my phone sometimes or my camera other times, my microphone, laptop. I'm rocking out. All right, that's all it is. That's all it is. It's very very simple to do, but some people see that. And they don't understand the background of it. And they don't like the fact that you're doing it. And I know people who have way better equipment than I do. And they're not doing it. I don't know why they're not doing it. I think they should do it. Um, but maybe it's the, it's the flight or the freeze mentality. They don't know if they can. Or they're scared to do it with what little they have. Because like I said, I just have basic things. But I'm willing to embarrass myself and when I say embarrass myself, I'm not saying, you know, cringe embarrassment. I'm just saying I'm willing to fail. I'm willing because I'm willing to learn. I love to learn. And when you're trying to learn, you have to ask questions. And when you're asking questions, it's because you don't know. So you're going to mess up. And it's okay. But those are the three reasons why I think people turn on you in business. I think some people are just scared and they don't understand what's going on. Number two, they don't understand. And then number three, some people are just straight up jealous. 
And there's nothing you can do about a jealous-hearted person. You have to just, I say, love them from afar. Everybody doesn't believe in that, but I do. I think you should just love certain people from afar, let them be who they are, and they'll come around. Or they won't. Either way, they'll be fine. So what do I do? What's my top three things? I like to give you guys something. I don't like to just say what's wrong or what's going on. I want to give you some t some tips and saying it to put into your hustler kit, right? Vet people. You have to have discernment. That goes into the envious, jealous folks. You got to be able to discern that. You got to understand, oh, this person is jealous. This person doesn't want to see me win, right? This person feels some type of way because I'm doing good in life. You got to be able to vet that kind of person and really sit down and think about it. I pray. Everybody doesn't believe in prayer. I think you should at least try to pray or meditate. Um, you know, business can be rough. You're going to need it. This is how I feel, right? So I pray, you know, Lord, show me um, who this person is, if I should be around this person. Be careful praying for, for people to uh, to get out your life if they're bad for you, because you'll be surprised who starts leaving. Interesting, right? Happened to me before. To this damn shock. Shock in the pool. Like, God, for real, that was my dog. Eh, things happen. Right? So vet people. Have discernment. You... you you know, be careful of the people who say, I'm going to stick around you because I know you're going to be great one day. That person is a leecher. They're a hanger on her. Watch your back, okay? Because to them, yeah, we could talk about that all day. Just have good discernment, right? Number two, what do I do? Number two, I had to embrace that separation is okay. You got to separate from people. Everybody is not meant to go with you. Everybody cannot come with you, Right? And I can't dictate when you'll embrace that. Um, that comes in your own timing. But you just have to one day embrace the fact that everybody can't come. All right. And number three, don't sulk. Don't cry. Don't cry. Like I said before, no, you can cry. You can let it tear out when people leave. Because it hurts. You know, I'm human. I get it. It hurts when people leave. Uh, but I would say use that as an opportunity to throw yourself into the madness of whatever you're starting right so if you're you know you're starting a family and people start hating on you man forget them work on cultivating and growing that family people hating on you because you're starting a business man whoever's coming come on whoever's leaving wish you well right and begin to cultivate and grow that business and worry about scaling and what your exit strategy is and getting your business plan together. It's a lot that goes into growing a business so you know you're not going to have time to be worrying about people much anyway right it's all about what you want out of life do you want to sit and harp on the fact that you're losing people and that separation is occurring or do you want to grow i say let's grow all right so again the quote of the day people that want to be you will hate you for the things they wanted and quit on people that want to be you will hate you for the things that they wanted and quit on don't forget I told you here first. All right, it's your girl Mariah. You're tuning into Survival Get the Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Again, word to the wise. Don't worry about people who are leaving you because you are doing better in life and you're figuring out your, your way. You're going through your journey. It's okay. Everybody can't come on your journey. That's why it's your journey. All right, I'll kick it with y'all next week. Same time, same place, every Thursday, 6 p.m. Coming to you. All right, and check out our YouTube it's under my name, Mariah Anderson. Uh, every Thursday, between Thursday and Friday, I'll be posting the episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm speaking into existence. I'm gonna get me a, a video editor. I know how to do video editing uh, because of college courses I took and some some things I had to do, some projects I worked on in the past. But it's time consuming and tedious, and I don't like to do it. So I'm praying that I can pay a team one day. I have a studio, I have a team, and then y'all going to look back on this episode like, yo, she said it, right? <laughs> Again, it's your girl Mariah. Thanks so much for listening. Catch y'all next week, all right?